welcome back to a new dump and go crock pot dinners video i couldn't be more excited to share this one with you these are some of our all-time favorite crock pot recipes and i really hope you enjoy them a little update on our house we are actually moving into our house in a few days from now and i really can't wait to show you the new kitchen but i hope you guys are all doing well and if you are new here we would love to have you so go ahead and subscribe down below the video and let's get to cooking to get us started off, we're making this classic tender beef stew. So to begin, I'm going to be chopping up my veggies, three potatoes I'm peeling and dicing, about five carrots and a half of an onion. Now over to my crock pot that I did spray with some nonstick spray, I'm adding my two pounds of some stew meat in there. And then I'm going to add all of our veggies that we chopped up. You're also going to want to add in 16 ounces of green beans. You do want to add the frozen green beans just so they're not mushy in the end. For the remainder of the ingredients that I'm going to be dumping in here, I'm just adding one 14 ounce can of crushed tomatoes, two cups of water, a fourth a cup of some Worcestershire sauce, two bay leaves, and then some salt and pepper to taste. After I stir everything together, I'm going to cook this on low for eight hours, or you could cook this on high for four hours. Here is the finished product. This is the perfect jump and go recipe. You just throw it in your crock pot in the morning and then when you come home, it is cooked and ready to eat. This is delicious. The meat is nice and tender and it has wonderful flavor. I haven't made sloppy joes in quite some time, so I decided to make it on this night. In my pan, pan right here, I have a little over a pound of some ground beef. I'm just going to season it with some salt and pepper and cook it completely through. You could use ground turkey as a substitute of ground beef if you don't care for ground beef. Now that my ground beef is completely cooked, I'm just going to remove all of the excess grease. Moving over to my crock pot, I'm going to add our ground beef that we just cooked up right in there. This sloppy joe recipe is so simple, so if you're new to a crock pot, you might want to make this recipe just to, you know, get started out. But to my crock pot, now I'm adding a half a cup of some ketchup, two tablespoons of brown sugar, a tablespoon of Worcestershire, a teaspoon of some mustard, a half a teaspoon of garlic powder, onion powder, and paprika, and then a little bit of some salt salt and pepper to taste. I'm going to stir this all together and then this goes on high for three hours or low for six hours. Here is my sloppy joe. I served mine on a bun with some cheese and then some potato salad on the side. This was really, really delicious. It kind of reminded me of summer, but it was nice and warm. This also had a lot of flavor. It was just a great meal. Now for probably the world's easiest chicken alfredo in the crock pot. This recipe is so good. It's homemade alfredo, so it's even better. You're gonna wanna make it. But anyways, to my crock pot, I added two cups of heavy cream along with one cup of some chicken broth. You're also gonna wanna add in eight ounces of cream cheese. I did block this cream cheese into smaller cubes, so I just cut it into smaller pieces, I guess I should say. Now I'm just adding in my four tablespoons of butter. I also also cut the butter into smaller pieces one chicken breast this chicken breast is quite large it's about a pound and then some fresh garlic about five cloves of garlic To ensure that this has plenty of flavor, I'm going to be adding a half a teaspoon of Italian seasoning, salt and pepper. I 
I place the lid right on top and this cooks on high for about two hours or you could cook this on low for about three to four hours. Once your crock pot is almost through cooking, you're gonna to begin to boil up your noodles. I'm using a little over a half a pound of fettuccine noodles. You could use any type of noodles you have on hand. I just had these on hand, so I wanted to use them up. And now back over to my crock pot, I'm going to remove our chicken breast that is now cooked, and I'm going to shred it into smaller pieces, or you could cube this chicken or cut it into any way you want to. Just add your shredded chicken back into your crock pot and then add one cup of some grated Parmesan cheese. You're going to whisk this all together because your cream cheese will still be in the cubes that you cut them from earlier. So just whisk it together and then the cream cheese will melt down perfectly and it will be nice and smooth. Once you are through with that, you're going to bring your noodles that you did drain and then add them in there, stir this all together and let this sit on low for about 30 more minutes. Here is the finished product, the 30 minutes after just sitting there, it made it nice and thick. This Alfredo sauce is amazing. It's probably one of my favorite Alfredo sauces ever. It's just really simple to make and then it's a crock pot meal so i was able to leave the house while it was cooking here is my bowl of alfredo i served this with some garlic bread on the side and a side salad i just didn't happen to show that but like i said previously you definitely want to make this one it is a family favorite for sure for some ranch chicken and potatoes, I'm going to begin by cutting up eight red potatoes into smaller pieces and then I'm going to set them aside. So now we're going to begin to work on that creamy, yummy mixture into this bowl. I'm adding one onion that I diced into smaller pieces along with one can of cream of mushroom soup. If you don't care for cream of mushroom, you could add any type of cream of soup as a substitute, a half a cup of some milk, salt, and pepper to taste, and then you're you're also going to be adding in this ranch dressing mix. I added in about two tablespoons of that and now I'm going to whisk this all together. To my crock pot that I did spray with some non-stick spray, I added our red potatoes in there and then our chicken breasts. This is two chicken breasts that I just cut a little bit smaller. I meant to do three chicken breasts, but I didn't realize I only had two chicken breasts left on hand. Three chicken breasts would be perfect, needless to say. And then I added our creamy mixture on top along with three tablespoons of butter that I just cut down into smaller pieces. This is going to cook on low for about seven to eight hours. Once your chicken reaches 165 degrees internally, you're going to remove it to a separate plate and shred it up. Add that shredded chicken back into your crock pot, give this a really good stir, and then your meal is done. You are ready to serve this up. Here is the finished product. This is my plate of food. I just served mine with a side salad, put some fresh parsley on top and some more salt and pepper. This was amazing. My entire family enjoyed it. For some barbecue pulled pork sandwiches, I really wanted to make this. I haven't had pulled pork in a while. I guess I was just making a lot of food that I just hadn't had for a while this week. So into my crock pot, I added our two pound pork tenderloin, or you could use pork shoulder, pork butt, anything like that, but I just prefer pork tenderloin. It is just a little bit less fatty in my opinion. I'm just sprinkling it with some seasonings, chili powder, cumin, garlic powder, paprika, brown sugar, salt, and pepper. I do want to mention you could sear this pork first. It would add a lot of great flavor, but on this specific day, I was rushed to get out of the house and I didn't have time to sear this and it turned 
turned out perfectly in the end. So now I'm just adding one big diced up onion into smaller pieces to my crock pot. This is gonna cook on low for about eight hours, and then here we are eight hours later. You do wanna remove any of the excess fat on your pork, just because nobody really wants to eat that. Mine wasn't very fatty because it was a tenderloin, so I didn't have to remove much, but now I'm just shredding up our pork. I'm doing it with an electric mixer because it's easier. And then I'm going to be adding about three-fourths cup of some barbecue sauce. I just used Sweet Baby Ray's because that's my family's favorite. You're going to stir this all together put the lid on top and then put this back on low for an additional 30 minutes to get that barbecue sauce warmed through. Here is the finished product. This is my plate of food. I served my pulled pork sandwich with some more barbecue sauce on top, pickles, and some fresh white onions. Also served this with a salad and baked beans. This was fabulous. And that is a wrap of this video today. I really hope you enjoyed it and found a recipe that you might be able to make for yourself. I hope you have a wonderful week this week and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.